Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there can be no doubt we are living in the last minutes of human history and world events prove it the bible tells us although people see the signs of jesus return they are willingly ignorant sadly this includes many in the christian church as well second peter 3 3 through 7 knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. MSNBC mocks the rapture. The rapture might come. Haley stays in as criminal defendant Trump faces possible conviction. It's the same in the same day. It's the it's the rapture. The rapture, <laughs> the rapture. right? The rapture. There needs to still be somebody standing who's not gonna get raptured yes. in case there's a rapture. Right. Like that's Mom's basically the plan. This shouldn't be shocking to anyone who knows the signs of the end times, as the Bible describes humanity doing such things, as we read in Revelation 16, verses 10, 11, and 21. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Jude one seventeen and 18 But you, beloved, Remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time, who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. What is so significant in both 2 Peter 3 and Jude is, the prophets and apostles warned about mockers and scoffers. Apparently, the mockers and scoffers are a sure indicator we are living in the last days. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Matthew 24, 3-5 Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Pastor Apollo Quibbeloy, the most successful of the world's self-labeled saviors. The official coming of the Son of God was in April 13, 2005. He was an obscure evangelist from the rural Philippines until 2005 when he announced that God had appointed him Christ on earth. Yes, Lord! Hallelujah! A self-appointed son of God, Apollo Kiboloy has legions of followers. Based in the southern Philippine city of Davao, his Kingdom of Jesus Christ Church has expanded its reach to other parts of the world. But behind the Gospels and choirs, former followers say is an abusive cult. I was told by Kiboloi's close aide one night that part of being a so-called pastoral was to massage Kiboloi. She said it was my privilege to be able to touch and be near the Son of God. That night, Amanda says Kiboloi ended up raping her. Two Ukrainian women also testified before a Senate panel 
that they were sexually abused by Kiboloi. You have to like sacrifice your body. It's you have to have a sex with him. Kiboloi denies the allegations and has appeared to be threatening some of his former followers. Magingat kayo ngayon. Those of you who are on Facebook, on the internet, who keep ruining my name, be careful. He did not attend the Senate proceeding. And so far, he's also been able to avoid facing justice in the United States, where he's been indicted not only for human trafficking and sexual abuse, but also for financial crimes. The U.S. has not requested for an extradition. Arlene Stone, a former follower who's based in the U.S., says she was made to contribute to solicitation efforts in the U.S., for instance, by renting a car under her name. The damage of the vehicle was $18,000 and the, the ministry don't want to cover that. They told me that I that was my share um, to the work of God. Arlene says financial obligations burdened members with debt, while Kiboloi enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. He also has powerful connections. Former President Rodrigo Duterte is a close friend, and President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., a political ally. But critics say the tide may be turning. Kibuloi's news channel has been ordered to suspend operations. And an open hearing like this used to be unimaginable. The second coming of Jesus Christ will be a worldwide event, as we read in Matthew 24, 23 through 27. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Four years ago, we witnessed the horrors of what one virus could st instill on humans. The coronavirus halted the entire world mercilessly, claiming thousands of lives. It took massive global measures to contain it. Vaccines were developed rapidly to halt its spread, and still the world is reeling from the lingering effects of COVID-19. That was a story of just one virus, and its fatality rate was not more than 4%. What would happen if the world faces an even deadlier strain of unknown virus, or worse, many more such viruses that lie hidden deep within the permafrost? Permafrost is a permanently frozen layer on or under the Earth's surface. It consists of soil, gravel, and sand, usually bound together by ice. The soil beneath has been kept at below zero temperatures for hundreds of thousands of years. But due to climate change, the permafrost is melting in Canada, Siberia, and even Alaska. Scientists have begun planning an Arctic monitoring network that would pinpoint early cases of a disease caused by ancient microorganisms. Scientists believe that permafrost, at its deepest levels, may contain viruses that are up to a million years old. And if they are awoken, they can unleash catastrophic consequences. NASA climate scientists are warning about the potential resurgence of so-called zombie viruses, or viruses that can come back from the dead. They say warmer conditions are causing part of the Arctic's permafrost to thaw. If it thaws significantly, they say some viruses that have been lying dormant for tens of thousands of years could reemerge and possibly endanger animals and humans. Scientists say the permafrost acts like a time capsule for viruses and the mummified remains of long-gone animals. NASA wants to see climate concerns addressed. Growing concerns as we learn Chinese scientists are experimenting with a mutant COVID strain, 100% lethal in mice. Despite critics warning this research could spark another pandemic. Former CDC director Dr. Robert Redfield is here to react. Here we go again. Why would they do this again? Well, you know, Angela, I'm very much against uh, the wisdom of doing this gain of function research. I mean, I'm of the view that the original COVID pandemic was a direct consequence of uh, laboratory research that helped educate the virus to become more transmissible human to human, uh, not more pathogenic. And the work you talk about today is uh, work that they're doing that actually is changing the pathogenicity of these viruses. 
secret lab in China reportedly carried out a war game simulated against the United States. It showed hypersonic missiles launching into orbit and destroying American warships. Rich Edson, live in Washington, D.C., to explain what happened here, Rich. In this reported war game, a Chinese simulation shows these missiles evading U.S. military detection to strike an American aircraft carrier group using low orbit satellites to get these missiles through the U.S. Navy Spy One radar. It's a detection system on the Arleigh Burke class of guided missile destroyers. A Chinese government lab in Chengdu ran this computer simulation. All this is reported in the South China Morning Post. It's a Hong Kong based Chinese owned publication that's previously published what it has reported as Chinese military advancements. A Pentagon spokesperson says the Defense Department does not comment on hypothetical scenarios or virtual simulations. It's possible that they did this to simply freak out the American people and the U.S. Navy. China spends a great deal of time saber-rattling, and they saber-rattle to basically churn up U.S. attention and anxiety and to cause stress in the U.S. military system. The U.S. Navy has warned China's Navy is larger than its American rival, that Beijing has greater shipbuilding capacity than the United States, and that China is deploying this growing naval presence more aggressively around the world. Defense officials have also warned China is spending a lot more on its military than it claims. Senator Dan Sullivan has said U.S. estimates put China's defense budget at around $700 billion a year. That's two to three times other published estimates. The U.S. defense budget is about $800 billion. We're going to turn to the Middle East now, and new U.S. airstrikes targeted Iran-backed militia groups, this time in Iraq. Our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, is here. And Martha, you spoke to Iran's foreign minister. I certainly did, Michael. Iran is at the center of all of this. The U.S. airstrikes have been ramping up every day, growing in scope and frequency, with militants targeting American assets throughout the region. Overnight, U.S. Central Command announcing another strike in Yemen, targeting two Houthi anti-ship missiles posing an imminent threat. This is the 10th military airstrike in the region. A separate operation Tuesday targeted three sites in Iraq, including a weapons storage facility housing armed drones and missiles. The strikes in direct retaliation for attacks on American troops over the weekend including at the Al-Assad Air Base, where four U.S. personnel suffered traumatic brain injuries. And in the Red Sea, the U.S. also trading fire with the Iran-backed Houthis. Iran's foreign minister praising the Yemeni rebels' attacks on commercial vessels and targeting of U.S. Navy ships. He called them brave, but denying evidence his country is supplying the weapons. The Pentagon sent out pictures of those weapons showing they were from Iran. It's a show they put on TV, he claims. American officials have sent multiple private messages to Iran warning against escalation. Is there a red line for Iran where you would enter a war with the U.S.? The minister saying the danger of a wider war has increased and that the threat will persist as long as the U.S. stands behind Israel. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. Are we seeing any signs of a covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies today? There are several deals and initiatives on the table for a hostages and ceasefire deal. Some are short-term, others envision a comprehensive peace plan between Israel and the Palestinians and other Arab neighbors. One of the common threads most of these deals share is a call for a two-state solution with Israelis and Palestinians living side by side. 
God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. Now the focus, as usual, has been on Israel and whether it would agree to two states. But there's another side to this equation, Hamas and the Palestinians. Do they even want a two-state solution? Well, don't hear it from me. Let's see exactly what Hamas leaders have to say about such a proposal for peace. So Khaled Mashal, one of the political leaders of Hamas, outright rejects two states. He clearly says he only sees one solution, the annihilation of the state of Israel, the eradication of its Jewish population, and its occupation by Hamas. Oh, and hear what he has to say about Western youth helping this cause in the same interview. So, two state solution out, one state solution, check. Corrupting Western youth, check. So, what's next? How exactly do they hope to achieve their goal of a one state solution? Maybe this clip of Ghazi Hamad, another Hamas leader, will enlighten us. Israel is not a state on the land. We have to take it. Because in fact, it is considered a state of the 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 state and again, no two-state solution, no state of Israel. So for all those calling for a ceasefire, for all those calling for peace, for all those condemning Israel, maybe you should take it up with Hamas instead. We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten him. Where will we be? in the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself hereafter it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. 
Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know him. And the sooner, the better. A path of destruction was caused by powerful flash flooding which walloped Southern California. CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti reports from San Diego. Tonight, storm battered San Diego is cleaning up a massive mess. This event that happened yesterday was unprecedented more than anything we've ever seen. The city, known for its sandy beaches, now covered in muck and debris after yesterday's record rainfall plunged neighborhoods into chaos. How fast is it rising at this point? It's going really fast. Maritza Ramirez and her family raced to the attic, but the water just kept coming. My like, fear was just like drowning in the attic. So they climbed onto the roof and waited hours to be rescued. I was just like, what are we going to do? We can't go into the water. The water's dirty. The water's deep. We feel helpless. We were barefoot, cold, stuck on the roof. Emergency responders struggled as they went door to door, rescuing more than 100 trapped residents using kayaks and stretchers. You can see the water line around. Jessica Calise was like not home when chest deep water destroyed nearly everything inside. When you walked in for the first time and you saw this, what well, looks like the inside of a washing machine, what went on in your head? I mean, absolute like shock and disbelief. I've never seen anything like this. And cars like this show the power of this storm. Tonight, a long road to recovery ahead. According to FEMA, just one inch of flood water can cause $25,000 in damage. In this neighborhood, the water was over my head, Nora. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? Joel 115. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Luke 2125. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Haiti's gang wars are only getting worse, and local people are at their wits' end. The entire republic must rise to make Prime Minister Ariel Henry respond. We can no longer stand this insecurity. A UN report has found that homicides more than doubled last year, while the number of kidnappings rose by more than 80 percent as the violence spread from the capital into rural areas. Gang killings, kidnappings and sexual violence, notably against women and young girls, continue with widespread impunity. One in ten police stations nationwide were attacked last year and sexual violence was used systematically as gangs consolidated their control. Thousands of police officers have quit, leaving less than 10,000 active at any one time for a country of more than 11 million people. And there are few ways to flee. Neighboring Dominican Republic has tightened its borders, forcibly repatriating around 200,000 Haitians last year. Insecurity was exacerbated by the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in 2021. No elections have taken place since 2016, and the presidency remains vacant. Kenya has agreed to lead a UN-approved police corps to help Haiti's overwhelmed security forces, but the mission has been delayed amid a legal challenge by Kenyan opposition. I believe 2024 is going to be the most important election we've had since 1864. I mean it. And the reasons are clear. Democracy is on the ballot. Freedom is on the ballot. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, 
unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Today, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are putting abortion rights at the center of the political debate. CBS's Nancy Cordes reports tonight on their hope that the issues get voters to the polls. How dare he? The Biden-Harris campaign kicked into high gear today, going after Donald Trump on the issue of abortion in op-eds and ads around the country. In Texas, you are forced to carry that pregnancy. The goal? To tie the recent rollback in reproductive rights directly to the GOP frontrunner. We did the Roe v. Wade thing, which have been, they've been trying to get it done. Since Roe v. Wade was overturned 19 months ago, 21 states have established full or partial abortion bans. The issue has galvanized voters on the left who have turned out to protect abortion rights in seven states so far. Come this November, the issue will be on the ballot in up to nine more states, including battlegrounds like Arizona and Nevada. People have made it really clear that they want this right to be restored. Jennifer Klein leads the abortion policy effort at the White House. You've got folks on the other side who are really quite clear that if they could pass a national abortion ban, they would do so. Do you want to see a national ban on abortion? At the March for Life in Washington Friday, most people we spoke to said yes. Yeah, I absolutely do believe that. Not just in your state, but across the country. Everywhere. Everywhere. I went to see them outlaw abortion. But so far, the GOP frontrunner hasn't committed to a national ban. I'm not going to say I would or I wouldn't. Here's why he's cautious. Polls show two-thirds of all voters oppose it. With voter enthusiasm still lagging on both sides, the Biden campaign hopes that keeping abortion rights front and center will help motivate Democrats to vote come November. In fact, the issue is so central to their strategy that it will be the subject of the president and vice president's first joint campaign rally of the season in Virginia tomorrow. Is abortion murder? The Bible is clear. Murder is wrong. As stated in Exodus 20:13, you shall not murder. Murder is defined as the unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. Killing is done by the judgment of one human being against another for personal reasons. The Bible condemns murder repeatedly as a characteristic of a wicked society and places a person in danger of the judgment, as we read in Matthew 5:21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. So, is a fetus a human, or is it something else? Biologically speaking, human life begins at conception. No more genetic material needs to be added when the mother's egg and the father's sperm come together. They combine and create a new string of DNA that is personalized and totally unique. DNA is coded in information, the blueprint for the new human's growth and development. When a mother has an abortion, she is destroying a unique life the Bible clearly teaches that conception is the beginning of human life, as we read in Judges 16:17. That he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Samson refers to his unborn self as having already been what God planned him to be, a Nazarite. 
Again, the psalmist King David wrote that he was wonderfully made by God in his mother's womb, as we read in Psalm 139, 13-16. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. God says that he knew the prophet Jeremiah before he was in his mother's womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. King Solomon, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, wrote about the child in a mother's womb. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God, who makes everything. A baby in the womb has feelings, as we read in Luke 1.44. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. The baby, who would be known as John the Baptist, experienced the emotion of joy when Mary, being pregnant with the incarnate Jesus, entered Elizabeth's home. There have been over 61 million abortions in America since it was legalized in 1973. God's word has a lot to say about killing the innocent. Proverbs 24, 11, and 12. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. The Bible teaches that at conception, an unborn child is a human being that God is forming. It doesn't really matter what humans mandate is socially or politically acceptable. God's law takes precedence, as we read in Acts 5.29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. A mother who decides to abort her child is making a decision to end another person's life, and that is, and always has been, the definition of murder. There is good news for anyone who has had an abortion, and that is, that God offers forgiveness to anyone who confesses their sins, as we read in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, Repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming.
You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.